And uh, my name is uh, Jack Charters. I live uh, seven miles from here and uh, we've always enjoyed using this bridge. I felt uh, an attraction to the community and um, it could be made even more so. An issue has been made about the safety of this bridge. In all the years it's been in existence, I do not believe the, the physical state of this bridge has ever accounted for any type of an accident. And I'll tell you one thing, I'd sure rather be on this bridge than the Port Man Bridge in the wintertime. And that's something that, that, that's a bridge that the government really supports and endorses. We're not talking about having traffic on here, we're talking about a bicycle footbridge. You're on. Hi, I'm Gordon Murray. I'm the president of the uh, Lutton Farmers Market Association. And uh, I'm here at the old Spence's Bridge, which is threatened with destruction. And I, I just, it seems to me that it's an incredible part of this community, an important historical and actual contemporary part of the, bringing this community together. And uh, I certainly miss the bridge, even coming from, when I come here from Lytton. And it, it also occurred to me that it, that it could be an, an even greater cultural resource and, and source of sustainable economic development. And there's a lot of possibilities as far as uh, cultural events that could be held on the bridge over the river. I think it would be a huge tourist draw, but even having like a small, a, 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 an old European bridge with some small shops or even just awnings along one side of it. You could have artisans there, you could have little coffee, basically a market, a weekend market, a, a, a European style medieval market, a, a, a bridge, you know, there's famous bridges in Florence and, and all over Europe that have shops along the sides. I think that would be an amazing, amazing way to, to repurpose the bridge. Thanks. My name is Carol Moisevich. Um, I'm the Vice President of the Litton Farmers Market and I'm an artist and since we moved into the, um, the rural community of Litton and the Litton First Nations we've started to understand the dilemma that of the the uh, transcendence, the, the domination of the bureaucratic, the bureaucrats who have not been into the communities or even understand what the communities need, what they're about. And this one is a classic example of a bureaucrat making a decision, or some bureaucrats making a decision, which have got nothing to do with the needs of the community or any relationship to the community. The bridge should be used for foot traffic, for stores, for cafes, um, even in New York, I think there's one old uh, highway like this which is used for a park. It's just got trees growing on it. So, all kinds of other solutions other than just pull the thing down. We have to use our imaginations. Well, it's a lovely day for a walk across the bridge. <laughs> Would you like to come? It's a little bit inconvenient here. I wish they'd open up the sidewalk gate, but anyway, we made it. So I'm walking on this old bridge at my own risk. I just want everyone to know that. I haven't signed a waiver, but I'm on tape. Um, I don't believe that it's ready for catastrophic collapse, otherwise I wouldn't be walking on it. It's a lovely old bridge, great space. I mean, look at it. Don't you just feel like it's a ballroom? I mean, we could be dancing down this bridge, uh, making music. Uh, I'd like to see it painted and um, all bright colors and make it just a, uh, a place where people come and do things that life is all about, like enjoy the sun, visit with friends, create beautiful things, make music, walk their dog. The dogs love it out here. And then when you get out here, you just look at this incredible view. I mean, it just does not make any sense to me on any level of logic that this bridge should be torn down. Bridges are so valuable. Someone went to a lot of work 
energy, um, money uh, to build this bridge in the first place because it was necessary. And, you know, when you see it now, we've got the highway bridge. Look at the big old truck going across it. I mean, that's the highway bridge. That has nothing to do with what we're talking about here. We're talking about a way to get across the river for people with their dogs, with their baby carriages, with their bicycles on their feet. And getting from one place to another, we've got part of the old town over here. It's, it's a really old part of town with the longest continuing, continuously operating hotel um, and a lot of old residences. And then on the other side of the bridge, we've got a little bit more, it's a little bit more vibrant because the, the post office and the restaurant and the motel and the pub, and a lot of things going on here. So there's lots of reason for people to be walking back and forth. So we want to keep this bridge here. And the powers that shouldn't be have made this decision. It's not on our behalf. It's not for our safety or for our quality of life. It's really all about money. And if they want to put two or $3.2 million into dis demolishing this bridge, I would say as a taxpayer, uh, someone who they are stealing this money from basically to do things that I don't want them to do, I would say take my money and all the rest of the money that they're taking for the demo demolish demolition and repurpose it um, into something that w the community can be proud of and all the people that come through on their way through the Trans-Canada and the hi Highway 8, that they can enjoy it as well. I think this is a, a really strong message to those who want to make everything green and environmentally friendly and eco-efficient to keep a footbridge open and repurpose it in a very environmentally conscious way. Jackson and I live over on Highway 8, um, halfway between the two bridges and I am quite concerned the bridge is going to be permanently closed uh, for not just traffic but for people like myself to walk and bicycle. No longer will I bicycle over here. I have to drive my vehicle um, over because I am too afraid to drive along Highway 1 there or walk along Highway 1 over that bridge. Um, it's very, very scary. Even if they put a sidewalk in there, I will not walk over there. I am concerned that there's people with scooters or on uh, this side of the bridge that no longer can access over there except by going along the highway. Um, we have a lot of events that go on throughout the year at the community club over there, which is our local nonprofit uh, community club. And uh, it's, a, it's a pain for a lot of these people to have to drive around. Uh, you, the Department of Transportation and Highways just might think that it's only uh, a few, uh, three or four kilometers. That's not the point. Our gas station was just all of a sudden taken away from us a few years ago and uh, it does use a lot of extra fuel to go the short distances. Uh, as far as the increased traffic on Highway 8 over there, it has increased a great deal. Um, many, quite a number of my friends have been in near misses where 1 and 8 join over there. Um, people still not understanding all those signs. By the time you get to them, there's so many to read, you're totally confused. The other morning I nearly got hit by someone coming in the wrong way and uh, nothing has been done. January 1st, they closed it down. We have not, as a public, heard a word publicly from them. Maybe a little teeny bit online, maybe something about rumors that there might be some paving done over there or buying some lot at the end of Bighorn Curl for some unreasonable amount of money. 
but uh, no, I'm I'm very against them closing it. Uh, we actually on the other side are Old Spences Bridge. That's where the town was. That's where the his a lot of the history is and you've got these Department of Highways has got these big historic welcome to historic Spences Bridge well there's not even a sign anywhere in town that says what's historic about it um, but I am very upset that this is closed I, I feel that I would like to ride my bicycle over here and being green certainly isn't driving my vehicle back and forth to this side of the river two or three times a, uh, a day when I could have easily been walking or, as I do, ride my bicycle. I'm a resident of Spences Bridge and uh, I enjoy this bridge. I, I think that this, this old bridge here uh, has a future if the right powers to be were to pay attention to saving small towns in British Columbia and tourism is a great future for this community so opening up this bridge for a tourism traction for uh, benches for viewing the river um, it's one of the best views in British Columbia and it would bring a lot more people in to just stop into Spence's Bridge and we need all we can get these days because uh, small towns are dying across British Columbia and this is a good effort. So if Minister Stone could uh, uh, change his mind a little bit and look at a different perspective on this, on this particular project, we might be able to do something good for Spence's Bridge and for small towns across the province. So thanks. Good luck, Dwayne. Good job. Um, my name is Wayne. I'm a new resident to Spence's Bridge. Um, having visited here over the years, uh, I really like the little community and uh, I'm uh, a little distressed as to seeing this permanent bridge closer. Um, I really don't think that this should have happened, but um, as far as I'm concerned, the ongoing infrastructure maintenance has been lacking and this would never have happened if it had been properly maintained. Um, take ships on the ocean that are in a caustic environment, they're still working 50 years later. Uh, they constantly maintain them. Uh, maintenance is an issue. They haven't been maintaining it. Now they're just going to let it fall down, take it down. Well. I don't see that as being a reasonable alternative to repurposing it to a pedestrian and cyclist bridge. Um, I looked at the engineering reports and I don't really think that they recommend its destruction or that it wouldn't be capable of handling uh, human traffic, not vehicular traffic well that's fine let's let's be green let's be really green and turn it into a bicycle or pedestrian bridge um, let's have the government actually live up to what they're talking you know talk to walk the walk instead of just talk the talk um, there's a lot of people here who live on the other side of the river who have to actually walk to this side to get to their mail um, they've got to go down to the Trans-Canada Highway Bridge, uh, walking past trucks, B-trains, cars speeding it. I would estimate some cars there. I am now living on a frontage road here, and even though it's a 70 kilometer an hour zone, I would estimate some of those people going through there are doing 100, if not 120. Well, do you have to walk along the side of a highway like that? just to get into town, to get your mail? Come on, find an alternative. If that's gonna be an option, then, you know, that's just lack of planning. Uh, poor, poor planning uh, indicates that the people who are actually involved in the decision-making don't have a true grasp of the needs of the people on the street. Um, it's all a dollars and cents thing. There's no humanity there. It's, uh, 
actually I find it quite disturbing. Uh, I'd like to see uh, a little bit more of a liaison between the people that are actually living here and a bit of someone within the government that actually really does care and doesn't just care about the bottom line which is uh, dollars and votes and saving money. Thank you. Doreen, you come and sign though. Oh yeah, for sure. Why are you never for Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting a little warm out here. I ain't seen nothing yet. Yeah. 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 I gotta do numbers. Yeah. Settle down. Thank Settle you. down. This is this is a new plan, right? So uh, uh, between the Trans Canada and Number Eight Highway across the river, we're gonna put up uh, uh, radar traps, right? So if we can catch eight an hour, that's that is over eight, twelve an hour, uh, over eight hours. That's hundred a day, easily done. Average or the low figure is $140 a ticket, right? Let's do the math here. $14,000 a day, uh, then the month would be half a million. Uh, two years, we got $12 million raised to redo our bridge. Easily doable because we live on the number eight. We do see, what do we see in an hour, right? We can see literally hundreds going by there at sometimes at 100 clicks an hour. Now here comes a good one. Uh, it's a 50 kilometer zone there at 100 clicks. It doubles actually, am I right here? Probably. That's where the money is. We can pay the officers, no problem. Uh, even pay for their overtime. We could probably run 12 hour shifts here. I think we should sell beer on the side of the road. <laughs> it, is it is it a crazy plan? I don't think so. I think it's great. Uh, we'll have our Brits rebuilt. Uh, everybody happy, except uh, the traffic. So uh, how long is it going to take before uh, two years? Flies and then two comes years, the road twelve anymore? million. <laughs> Uh, it's doable. It's doable. Uh, uh, once every three months, we have raiders set up here. Ask these officers how many they catch in just in the four hours. So it's totally doable, and uh, makes everybody happy except uh, the traffic ticker uh, payer. Uh, so I think it's a great idea. <laughs>